search and rescue dogs serve on the front lines, locating people missing after natural disasters, lost children, injured hikers, and others, being ready at a moment's notice to bravely endure the elements and save lives. Supreme Master Ching Hai, world-renowned humanitarian, artist, and spiritual teacher, speaks of her admiration and concern for these devoted canines. And I saw many dogs, you know, they use for a rescue mission. Uh, they just walk in like nothing. But I feel so bad about them. Dogs walk in the sharp, broken glasses or anything like that, even chemical leaking or anything, or, or germs or danger. And these are precious dogs. They've been trained for years, and they even lay down their life for anyone at command. You have to protect that dog. To show her loving support for search dogs and their human partners, Supreme Master Ching Hai has generously contributed over 80,000 US dollars to search and rescue teams in 18 countries, including Australia, Belgium, Canada, Chile, China, the Czech Republic, Ecuador, France, Korea, Malaysia, Nepal, New Zealand, Panama, the Philippines, Slovenia, the Netherlands, the UK, and the USA. Today, we return to Canada to visit again with members of the Ontario Volunteer Emergency Response Team, or OVERT, which provides timely search and rescue assistance during such events as natural disasters in the province of Ontario, Canada, and various nations around the world. With their keen sense of smell, the search and rescue dogs of OVERT's canine unit comb through forests, collapsed buildings, and other areas for lost, injured, and missing persons. Glenn Turpin, team coordinator, has been with Overt since 1994 and works in the canine unit. We asked him about how they select dogs to become team members. We need the cream of the crop. We need the best dogs out there. We're looking for very high drive, a high sociability, and um, uh, just a strong ethic to work. The dog wants to, to get out there and work with you. Um, so that's a major component of what we're looking for is that drive. When we first started, we mostly worked with German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois. And that was due to the fact they had a dual coat, so they have that undercoat. They're very versatile breeds, uh, highly intelligent, highly motivated. Because the climate that we work in here in southern Ontario can go from very hot in the summertime to very cold in the winter. So some of the shorter aired breeds uh, weren't suitable for that. Mm -hmm. We're not breed specific. Um, we, we look for that high drive. We'll now meet Samson and his partner, Lei Shut, and then see them in a training exercise involving tracking. The tracking method is where the dog sniffs the ground, looking for the scent of the missing person based on an item previously worn or held by the person, such as a hat, t-shirt, or mobile phone. Hi there, my name is Lee Schutt. This is my partner, Samson. He's a two and a half year old German Shepherd, and we specialize in the live scent discipline. So what we're gonna have here is Clint is our track leader and trainer, and Lee and his dog, Samson, are gonna be practicing tracking. Lee and Samson are a new canine team for the Ontario Volunteer Emergency Response Team. So this is the beginning stages of tracking training for our dog teams. So Clint will play him up have some fun and then Lee will have the dog follow his exact foot steps that he's taken and then at the end of it he'll get his reward. And it's all about positive reinforcement scent association so he'll associate the human scent on the ground with the fact that he gets his toy at the end of it. So Clint's laid the, uh, the track, he's put the toy at the end of it. It's a short track, we start off uh, with short single leg tracks. And as you can see, uh, Samson's pretty excited to go do his work. Clint will come back, show Samson he doesn't have his toy anymore. And then Lee will uh, direct the dog to start tracking. This is what we call drive or motivational tracking. 
So what we're looking for, as you can see, Samson is frantically searching the ground, following that scent that Clint had left behind, and he'll follow that right to the source of where the toy is. And every time the dog's head comes up, the handler will stop until the dog starts tracking again. When his head's up like that, he's not tracking. So Lee and him will work together. You see Samson working, trying to get all that scent. Follows the track, right to the end, and gets his toy at the end. It's a big celebration with everybody. Everything has to be fun. It has to be a positive, memorable experience for the dogs. And we'll repeat this process a few oh times. Good boy. Oh boy. Where you go? Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The canines are so selfless and excited to do their task, their partners must keep a close eye to ensure that their friends pace themselves while searching. They're so driven that we actually have to monitor them to make sure that they don't work themselves too much, especially in the heat. They'll, they'll work themselves so they drop if we don't. So we're very cognizant of it. We're very aware of what our dogs are all about. You know, we know uh, when they're working and, and their limits and hydration and care and everything else. So. So the bond between the handler and the dog is very important. Who normally cares for these determined canines when they are not working? They're uh, assigned to a handler, so they become a team. So uh, once we select a dog, then we select a handler from within the team, and they're a team, they're a partnership, so that bond is developed. Um, yes, we could work each other's dogs to an extent, but that one handler knows the dog the best. So there's a little subtleties. So there's time is, you know, they're at home with the handler, they're, they're, um, they're part of the family. Um, that social bond is required uh, for the dogs to work properly. We saw Jason Cockburn and Justice in a training session yesterday. Justice is one of the most experienced search dogs in the unit. Hey, my name is uh, Jason Coburn and this is my canine partner Justice. Justice uh, is a nine-year-old Belgian Malinois, and we've been working together for the last six years. Uh, he's a sable-coated Mal, and uh, he'll be actually 10 in, uh, in May. So unlike Samson, who is tracking and following the ground scent itself, um, we don't always know where somebody's walked. So Justice is basically going to be searching for the human scent that's being carried on the, on the wind. The wind's kind of blowing in our face. We're facing north. And basically what he'll do is he starts following. If you watch the dog, he'll hit what we call the scent wall. And that's how the dog will start figuring out and he'll start working it back to where our victim is. Well, you can see the indication. His head's come up, he's looking around, he's got the smell, and now he's found our victim. So now Justice sits and barks, telling Jason that he's found the victim. And if the victim tried to walk away, say we're dealing with uh, somebody who might be having a... a uh, an episode of some sort or is um, uh, suffering from uh, dementia or uh, mentally challenged and starts to walk away from the dog, they don't realize he's there to help, Justice will actually cut him off and won't let him walk too far before Jason gets to him. So he'll stay and bark with him until such time as Jason uh, rewards him and uh, lets him know that he's had a job well done. Looking over the wind or uh, searching uh, for the scent on the wind what we call an open search or an area search. And this is used when, uh, when the, we don't know the exact point last seen of our victims and we have a, a large area to search. Uh, the average dog team can search an area 20 times faster than a 12 person's ground search and rescue team. The beauty of the dogs on their noses, they're not limited by darkness, weather. Um, their noses work all the time. And Justice finding them again. We also met Barak yesterday on our program, and now have a chance to see him in action. So this is Barak. He's our certified cadaver dog. I'll work him off leash. He'll work his way into the scent. Once he gets in the scent, he'll bark and dig. And then once he gives me the right indication, then he'll be rewarded for his work. Want to search? Search. 
a fairly straightforward search for the dog. He's going to work the scent cone. As you can see, he's coming into the scent there. He'll check around looking for some more. Once he gives us a positive indication like that, good boy. What do you got? Good boy. Speak. Good boy. Gets his reward for his job. Finally, we meet Nige and Dale Stevenson and watch one of Nige's training sessions. I'm the deputy coordinator with Obert, and this is my dog, Nietzsche. Uh, Nietzsche joined us about 10 months ago, and the children of the local Indian reserve named him Nietzsche, which means uh, friend in Ojibwe. Nietzsche, he's a, a Labrador retriever. Uh, he's our, our newest cadaver dog on our team. So he's uh, in the beginning stages of his training. So we're, we're a little bit more uh, methodical with him at this point in time. We're, we're showing him what he's supposed to be doing and reward him for it. So his handler, Dale, is going to uh, work Nietzsche online up towards the hide is. So Dale will uh, work over there, over to the location where um, the hide is. And uh, from there, uh, once uh, Nietzsche makes the proper indication, She'll uh, give him his command to sit, which is uh, his indication that he's located the, the scent, and then we'll reward him for it. Okay. So as Nietzsche gets into the scent, he's given his command to sit. And then he gets his reward. <laughs> Where's your toy? Good dog. So again, it's all about the fun, having fun. To keep wonderful canines like Nietzsche safe and comfortable while working, Supreme Master Ching Hai provided the team with $1,000 US dollars to purchase protective gear such as dog shoes or warm jackets. We again sincerely thank all the members of the Ontario Volunteer Emergency Response Team, including Justice, Warwick, Sampson, Nige, Glenn Turpin, Dale Stevenson, Jason Cockburn, and Leigh Schutt for your exemplary service and willingness to always lend a helping hand to the community at large. May your work continue to provide hope for many more people in need for years to come and beyond. For more details on the Ontario Volunteer Emergency Response Team, please visit www.overt.ca. Thank you for joining us today on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May your world always be brightened by the light of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.